Hey guys, Richard here with CRG Games, and I just finished the Time Spiral Remastered Draft Booster Analysis, so let's take a look at the numbers. This is my main spreadsheet here, and the way I do this is I export a filtered CSV from TCG, fill in all my numbers, that way I can instantly upload those to my inventory, and after I'm done, I take that, I clean it up, uh, you know, make tables and charts and graphs and all that stuff. So this is the main table. And this workbook will be available in the comments uh, via Google Drive, so you can go through, um, look at it in more detail. Uh, this is the main uh, table here. It has all the add to quantities. It currently, it's sorted by um, you know market value, which cards gave me the most return. And uh, of course, there's some slicers here, so you can break this down, you know, however you want to go through them. Uh, Value-wise, we'll see here that the market value and the low uh, direct value, direct low, are relatively close. Um, lands had the most value, of course. Tokens had the least. If we take that out, uh, it was between white, um, white and multicolored cards uh, that had the lowest uh, share of value. Now, direct low is higher because TCG charges anybody selling direct um, a uh, shipping. Um, an estimated shipping charge, essentially, when you sell a card, TCG will, um, you know, maybe charge shipping to the buyer, and that's reimbursed by the seller. When we get our reimbursement invoices, we, you know, pack up all those cards, and we ship them out. Um, that number de is determined by the value of the cards and the amount of them shipped, uh, but generally on a single card, I think TCG charges the seller it's something like uh, 78 cents or somewhere in that range. So direct sellers will generally build that into their price. That way we're not just getting hammered and losing tons of money. The rarity breakdown has the special cards. That is the retro frame cards at, of course, the highest as you'd expect. Commons and uncommons are basically the same and mythics and rares are not that far apart. On the color chart, Watsi did a really good job at um, breaking down the colors to be relatively even. When I was sorting these cards, I noticed that each stack was pretty much the same size. And then when I made this chart, uh, I could see here that the numbers were extremely close. So I would think that lends to a very good draft experience. Everybody should be able to play the colors that they want or the combinations that they want. Now in the analysis portion here, I bought eight boxes, but I'm only, um, I only cracked six. The price I paid on the sale was two fifty four a box, and after um, cash back, that came out to fourteen fifty for the six boxes. There's our per box, per pack, and per card price, and these boxes have been trending at about two hundred ninety nine dollars for a long time now on TCG. Um, shipped to your house with free shipping, but paying tax, that's going to be about three hundred twenty dollars a box, which it isn't too bad, um, but if you can get it for less than that, of course, that's what you want to do. Uh, pack price is almost $9, and the card price is you know 50 cents a card. Now, these are the same numbers from before, just broken down uh, by foil and non-foil. The percentages are interesting, um, and I think the reason they're so low is because the original product would have had low uh, foil rates as well. Now, I wasn't playing Magic at the time. Um, I wish I was, uh, thinking back on it now. But um, I, back in the day, you didn't get a foil in every pack. You know, you might go a couple packs, you know, a whole box only getting several foils. And those numbers really pan out here. So total market value is about $2,040. With the additional metrics down here, we've got a uh, average market value per pack, and that's 216 packs of 945 that's pretty close to what you're paying when you pay, uh, you know, market price for a box. 3,456 cards. I estimate it took me about eight hours to do this. That's a couple hours to uh, film the videos, put them on YouTube, and I don't, I don't do any crazy editing or anything like that. I basically just upload them. Um, the average net uh, that I get has risen over time. It's because I've been selling higher uh, priced cards, so I'm. It used to be 67%, now it's 70 and a half. And basically, that would net me about 1438 bucks on this 2000 which means I've lost money here. So I paid $1.50 an hour, essentially, 
um, for the uh, opportunity to crack these boxes. But with my cash back, I'm making seven fifty for an hour. Um, again, this is potentially if I sold all these cards instantly at market price. We know that doesn't work that way. The higher price cards, mythics, rares, retros, these are going to sell first. The rest are going to trickle out over time. So it's residual income. But at seven fifty four an hour, I'm making twenty nine cents over the federal minimum wage. So I think I'm the one that's making out like a bandit here. The price that I need to look at because I sell direct, and if you sell direct, these are the numbers that 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 matter for you, is this number here. So if we go down to the bottom, we're at about twenty three hundred dollars. Um, if we take into account direct values. And if you see a yellow in here, that's something that I had to enter manually. So if we take that and 70, you know, and a half percent of it, minus our cost, I'm left with $182 essentially. That brings my potential dollars per hour up to $22.75. And with my cash back, that's $31.79. That's a pretty decent return. Um, what I would hope is that these retros, um, and maybe some of the mythics, some of the rares that don't have many printings, uh, these are going to trend up over time. So at today's prices, you're looking at 182 at six months from now's prices, you know, this could be double that or it could be triple that. It all depends on what the market does. And if we go into a bear market and magic, you know, this could even go to zero. You, you might break even. If, uh, you know, Watsy totally rips it and, you know, prices go steadily higher, then we can see this trend upwards. And the one thing you always got to, you know, keep in mind is that anything could happen in any set, making any card instantly spike. You need to be wary of those because if you're not, you could be missing out on potential profit. So, one of the questions I had early on was how many retro foils do you get per box and on average per pack? So through Google searches, I found on Twitter that there was a number of one in 27. Um, that's actually exactly what it came out to. I got uh, 1.33 per box, eight of them. And that came out to one in 27 packs. So that number is pretty accurate. Now, if you're buying these boxes, expecting to make money, you're probably not going to. The reason being, even if you, um, you know, made, you know, let's say 30, 40, 50 bucks or whatever, after fees, that's going to eat all that. And you're probably going to be looking like this in the negative. If you can get it for under 250, excuse me, under $250, um, and your intention is to crack these boxes for draft or just for purely entertainment purposes, I think that's the way to do it. If you're purchasing over that, you know, at $299, you might want to consider selling sealed packs at a little bit higher than $945, maybe $12 to $13 as prices go up, or just holding on to that box and selling it sealed. Given that this this product has been out of print for quite some time, and there really wasn't a whole lot to go around in the beginning, um, the number of boxes on the open market will continually decline. Um, people are going to open them. People are going to lose their cards. They're going to be damaged. Um, so the actual supply of the product over time goes down. As long as the cards stay relevant, um, the demand should rise and the values go up. So these I'm not selling. Those are going directly in a binder. Some of the Mythics uh, rares and some of the foils um, mythics, rares, uh, foils of those are going in my binder as well. Things that I think are going to raise in value over time. There aren't a whole lot of these foils for sale on the open market. Um, if you look at any individual card, um, you know, the highest priced ones are up there over $250. The least priced ones are, you know, I think sub $5. Uh, but on average, you know, in here on average, I got $26.97. If we go back to here, the special near mint foils, the average price of these is $30.45 a card. 
that's pretty high. And if this number trends up over time, and you can see pretty large, uh, you know, price increases in these boxes or in the individual packs. If you can get the packs for less than this, that's probably not a bad idea either, or less than that. So um, that's been the breakdown. I, I hope you guys found this information helpful and you can use it and apply it. Um, if you could, leave me a comment if you would. You know, give me your thoughts if, if you uh, um, think these are helpful. I do have a couple more in the pipeline that I'm going to be working on a Strixhaven set um, box case and a Streets of Nuka Pena set booster box case. Um, I would like to do an Adventures in the Forgotten Realm set booster box case as well, but I have not um, gotten a case of those. I'm kind of waiting to sell off some of this product before I do that. Um, but we'll, we'll see about how long that takes. Uh, if you would, Throw a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing if you find this helpful. Um, I'm going to keep making these videos regardless because I enjoy it. I love the numbers and I love Magic the Gathering. So uh, for me, this is this is purely just fun. Um, and I, and I, I hope on a secondary thing that people can get value out of it. So until next time, I will catch you guys later.